So hi, one of the Gunners Podcast with Glass Beach. We're gonna ask them some questions today. I'm gonna start. So what inspired you guys to start the band and what does the band name mean? Um that's a good question. Uh what inspired us to start the band? Like, we wanted I, to. I had I had music. <laughs> you are the worst. <laughs> There's worse. <laughs> we wanted to. I picked um, up this thing called a guitar and I was like, hey, this is pretty cool to do for the rest of my life. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, I, I had, uh, yeah, I had some music that I was writing and at the same time I was, uh, looking for an apartment in LA cause I had been living on my friend's couch and, uh, we, uh, we all, or me and, uh, Jonas and William, uh, met on Facebook somehow, um, and ended mm-hmm. up, uh, yeah, yeah, we ended up, uh, getting an apartment together and then I just kept talking about this, these songs that I was working on and how I needed a band and then they were just like oh we play instruments <laughs> that's basically how it happened okay I mean that's interesting <laughs> yeah. it was like the right circumstances at the right time because we had like William and I had just moved out here and we, we also needed like more people to live with so we could afford yeah. to live in LA and we also yeah wanted to like start at least a band if not several and um, y'all had heard my music before we mm-hmm. met too I was, I was legitimately a fan of, of like the music I, I hadn't like I didn't know anything about like you personally I think I even like only shortly before learning that you and William were somehow connected on Facebook was realized that it was like a person um I just like listened on Spotio, uh, Spotio, Spotify to Casio dad and, and liked it a lot Spotify. You know? Spotify. 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 <laughs> yeah. I think I think like a, a more like I don't know a broad answer would or specifically would be like all of us have um have been in bands like since we were teenagers uh and so we've had we've had like a bunch of musical projects up like leading up to this point up to glass beach um so i mean like yeah when we moved out here it was just kind of a natural progression of like becoming friends with jay and then wanting to make music (laughs) together it was pretty it was pretty immediately after we started living together that we you know we rented out a, a a a shared like space for like just a couple hours and jam together is to just to see how that felt mm-hmm. and yeah. uh, and we kind of went from there but mm-hmm. um yeah i think i think we just all would have been in bands for the rest of our lives uh continuing to to do that do music and whatever and it's just <laughs> um starting this band was just the fact that we found each other all at the right time mm-hmm. yeah and then we and then Lane joined later on because I had basically written all of the songs for a four piece, um, and we needed somebody to play the other guitar parts. And uh, yeah, I kicked in the door to the practice space, and I was like, <laughs> "Hey, I've got a guitar." <laughs> <laughs> they were like, "Cool." If I remember right, it was actually like the Lane and William and I had like a, a meeting at a coffee shop. We were kind of talking about a lot of things, but partially the idea of like sort of starting a new band with Lane, where William and I are like doing songs that we have written in the past and would write in the future and then that just like transitioned into well glass beach needs a guitarist right now and we already know that like we want to be in a band with lane so we can start here yeah oh. um okay. and Pretty then much. as for the band name uh glass beach is an actual beach that's in uh where, where is it fort, fort bragg. bragg yeah fort mm-hmm. bragg california i've there's, there's an east coast one too and there might be more there's one in russia one in russia well. <laughs> yeah. i know because i when i name search us like a bunch of russian oh, yeah. stuff shows up and it's like, <laughs> just a bunch of russian people talking about going to the glass beach and i'm just like okay cool <laughs> well, great. Now, people, now people are gonna look at glass beach and be like we'll see their fake russian surveillance <laughs> band for the diys <laughs> you know we could um, just talk about russia without bringing that up lame we could all just be like hey like there, there's some people in russia who love going to the beach and it's made of glass yeah. and, and you know what we even have some, we, we have some fans I, in russia yeah, i find I've, it funnier it though. yeah have you heard of putin um, <laughs> I, I, I find it funnier that we're all sleeper agents <laughs> i think it's um, cute that we are uh a russian plant i think that's pretty cool of us I just, yeah i think that's really cute <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really I quirky trait. Lot, but but anyway really the, move, the, putin. The, I don't know about the other glass beaches, but the glass beach in California is a beach that's basically made out of like sea glass that's been reclaimed by the ocean and just eroded into this really pretty colorful sand. Um, And I, I don't know that I can tell you like exactly what 
the name means, but I think that it's really interesting to me because it's this in- interesting like intersection of the human world and the natural world and like the human world being reclaimed into nature. I think that's interesting. <laughs> All right. uh, that's pretty like cool. That. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know those existed, so thanks for that. I thought you guys were just like, well, glass is cool. Beaches are pretty. <laughs> next to the other book. Okay, cool. Yeah. What's well, like the DIY, like sort of indie scene thing to just take a word and add beach to it? So yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, that we talked about not not because we wanted to do that, but because we wanted to make sure we were okay with doing that. Yeah, we knew early on like that people were going to be like glass beach. Oh yeah, <laughs> but it's great because we're going to do like glass beach money and glass beach life and death. Not the beach life and death is a band, but yeah, yeah. Like yeah. anyway, yeah. <laughs> Glass okay. beaches. <laughs> glass beaches. I mean that. <laughs> <Glass beaches. laughs> well, glass beaches is like is a band mm-hmm. in um I think Northern California. I can't, or I think oh. it's Seattle or something. Wait, really? There's a band yeah. called Glass Beaches. Oh no, oh, they're shit. they're in Seattle because we met somebody from that band. That's right. That's, that's right. Yeah. We did. They're at the yeah. show. Yeah, yeah and I was like, in... hey, if our paths ever cross again, let's play a show together. It would be really Yeah, cool. yeah, 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 that's the, right. <laughs> the, drummer, uh, the drummer who was drumming with Floral Tattoo at the time, I don't know if they're mm-hmm. in the band, but I know they were drumming for that set. Yeah, that was sick. Yeah. <laughs> cool, all right. Uh, so congrats on your newest album, uh, the first Glass Beach album. I love that name. Uh, how do you feel about the response to the album so far? I feel really good about it. Are we allowed yeah. to swear? I yeah. forgot yeah. to ask. Okay. Cool. I feel really fucking good about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really nice. Next question, please. Um, I, it feels like assing awesome. Shh, crap. Just like for my part, it uh, it is very like heartwarming and validating to see like more people than I would have like anticipated necessarily. Uh, sort of like latching on to it and building a community around it. Like I was prepared for it because I felt like the music was really, really good. But I've like, I've never had like my, I guess my particular taste in music be so like widely validated before, especially when it's something that I worked on. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I also gotta say, it's really nice being in a band where there's a lot of a, a lot of young people who are like finding themselves who are like also experiencing our music and that has been like a part of their stuff. Uh as opposed to like, and no offense to, to this demographic, but like a forty-five year old like like butt rock dude coming up and be like, man, dude, that fucking guitar is sick, dude. Wait, hold on, you know, you know, if a forty-five year old butt rock dude came up to us at a show and was like, those riffs, ah, you would be stoked. Yeah, I, 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 I'm happy regardless. Our music but, but I, like, I don't have much to talk about with think. butt rock dude because. <laughs> Like, cause then, cause then immediately it's like, oh yeah, you ever listen to like Avenged Sevenfold, man? You should hey. come at Butt Rock. That's, well, I, have I mean, you though? Have you listened to Avenged Sevenfold? There ain't nothing wrong with Butt Rock, dude. Wait, 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 wait. So how, do you, how do you feel about the reception to your album? Fuck Butt Rock. That's what this happened. To. <laughs> There's nothing wrong hey, with a little bit of Butt Rock, though. Lynn, you should you should mention your history of playing in in like metal bands and shit. Like, well, yeah, okay, okay yeah, that, that, that's good context. Majority <laughs> of my musical career has been in metal bands or like really heavy rock bands slash hardcore bands, and my last band, which was the most success I had like I had like garnered in a band up and like until Glass Beach. That band was like. We were like emo. We were like post hardcore emo. Like there was a lot of different stuff going on. We had some metal stuff. We had some rock stuff. We had some like emo stuff. But it was like a pop punk vibe too. Yeah, yeah. There, there's a lot of different stuff going on. But it's like, but it's like most of the places we played were like with other metal bands, and a lot of times it was just with like people. I feel like I didn't relate to quite as much. There's no, like, again, no offense to them. I'm, I'm always happy when someone comes up and is like, hey, nice music, man, or, like, whatever, but, like, I don't know. There's just something endearing about, like, knowing that there's a lot of, like, young people that are, like, inspired and, like, uh, in, in, in fine connection through our music, because that's yeah. just... That's, that's what I think is, like, really important about DIY and punk and everything that's sort of uh underground and anti-establishment in the music industry you know 
with that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I <laughs> love the reception of the first Glass Beach album. I, it is very uh, validating. I, I, I echo the things that have been said here, especially what Lane said about butt rock. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I also uh, I also want to say this is sort of a realization that I came to recently. I mean, because like, I wasn't necessarily a drummer before the this band. Um, I had drummed, but I wasn't a drummer. And uh, not only like how this album turned out, and but also like the reception to it has uh, really, really made me find my love for drumming. Like I think, like in certain instances, I I love playing the guitar and I love singing. Like those were my two; those are the things I love doing the most, like musically. But through this whole experience, it's I, I really, really do believe that like drumming is is a thing that I I now really want to do with my life. So it's it's a uh, very convenient that I have stumbled yeah. into yeah. A, a position where that will that will possibly. Well, you kind of have to at least for a little bit. Yeah. yeah, and now I'm actually getting good at the drums. <laughs> <laughs> so Honestly, like I mean, like I, I think that you, you sound really good on the first Best Beach album. I I think. You're good. I, I think you're better than it sounds like you have described thinking that you are or were on that album. So, like, I think a lot of people agree with me. I think a lot of people like your drumming on the first album. All the people who agree with me are going to be really excited about the second one. I'll, see, gonna be I'll say this. I love the drumming on the first album. Mm -hmm. I think that Jay and I put together something really, really incredible with that. I will say I'm excited to record a song next for the next album that doesn't take seven hours because I, <laughs> because I can barely play the song. I would, I'd rather be able to like, Oh, I've like, Oh, look at this technique. And I just, and I can just do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> now, right. I'm not afraid to say most of the drums on the, on the record are like chopped and screwed. They're like, they're <laughs> like put together by a bunch of different takes. I mean, wait, that's I have a, to I, ask William, William, that's a very, first of all, it's a very normal thing to do. Like in any, like, studio recording setting like second of all like there were a lot of songs that you never heard until we recorded <laughs> <That's> true <laughs> oh, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> not never heard in that completed version we had yeah. heard many versions before but yeah 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 so wait i have to ask is the second yeah. glass beach album going to be called the second glass beach album <gasps> no that's, oh. that's like, well i mean well, we, well can't, we can't say we can't say no that's no. That's going to be the like, that's going to be what we call it if we can't think of anything better. Is I'll that say why that. you guys named the first one the first Glass Beach album? Because you couldn't come up with anything better? I. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, 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 you come up with something better, motherfucker. No, I'm just, oh, yeah. you, I don't take it the way it's founded at all. Here, 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 here's, here's, here's what it is. I, <laughs> I love that. I, I, I named it that because I didn't want people to go into it with any like preconceptions or anything. Like, I didn't want to like do anything that would like overhype it or like, you know, give people a really specific idea of what it was going to be before hearing it. I just wanted the music to speak for itself so i tried to give it basically a non-title just so the music could work on its own terms right. that's where that came from that's okay. <laughs> um, so can you guys tell me a little bit about your writing process um, demoing just constant yeah. demoing mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i would say i mean at least from how i've seen other people write like the unique thing about our process is that the recording is kind of baked into the writing in the way that we write mm. like from the beginning we're like making considerations about like how things are going to be like mixed and eq'd and like you know what effects are going to put on everything how it's all going to fit together in the final product like from the beginning like before we figured out the chords we're thinking about the mix you know <laughs> yeah. um but yeah it's it's an extensive process of like trying trying everything one way and then uh, trying a different version, combining the best parts of those versions and just doing that over and over again. And then what we have in the end is sort of a combination of a bunch of different, completely different conceptions of the same song. Mm -hmm. It's a really very good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and, the, and the first and record was like mostly Jay you know, sending us demos and being like, what do you think? And then we take... Well, at that point, not even sending, just calling us over to the room. That's true. We lived yeah. together at that mm -hmm. point. Um, yeah. Sometimes but... I didn't even call you over. I was just fucking with something. And then you'd just mm -hmm. walk up and be like, hey, that's really cool. <laughs> 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 but we, it, it was that. 
um uh for the for the first record it was like mostly that and then we would take it into our practice space and just Mm -hmm. like jam it out and um maybe add some stuff maybe decide to like take some stuff out here and there and then jay would just like continue making demos after demo after demo um what's the i will say like the difference between the first album the second album is going to be it seems like that um we uh, were kind of all like jay is still doing most of the preliminary writing but there is like lane has been sending some demos to us mm-hmm. i i recently like put together a demo like a very very yeah. bare bones demo and like jonas has been working on some stuff as well yeah like, we might it's like the second album is likely to have songs that started from one of us other than jay which is not true for the first album yeah very cool <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> cool <laughs> uh, so where was your headspace while writing the first glass beach album like everywhere that it could be <laughs> right? honestly like yeah that thing took like four years to write oh wow <laughs> shit jesus <Christ>. um <laughs> i mean it it depends on where you where you draw the line of like when we actually started working on it because it was a mm-hmm. while into that that it was actually we're writing an album but a lot of the songs i'd been like they'd been kicking around for years before that um where where was where was our headspace i don't know i don't know i mean well we pretty were pretty stressed out we were pretty, the music. pretty stressed really poor mm-hmm. um <laughs> uh, yeah. i was doing a, i was producing a lot of theater at the time doing a lot of stage managing um so that was a lot very stressful as well and music wise yeah i mean i think i think the as many places as possible was true even when it was like just the three of us working on it just because like we wanted to i it was it was like a very experimental like we wanted to if we had a thought we wanted to try it and that's why we jammed out so much and like yeah um just yeah we just tried things and we, we didn't want to say no to any ideas until we heard them and i don't think we really did yeah yeah, yeah. and i mean as far as like if you want to go into your like specific headspace jay i know i know on a like a previous interview or something you have said that um your like take for like the themes and everything was sort of looking not not like looking for that like f- sad shit like going into the deepest like recesses of your of your sadness and like pulling something out of it it's more this album is more over like you know finding that like solidarity and that like comfort in the that friends and like the people around you and 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 like finding the good parts out of the situation that you're in not necessarily like a mantra of like oh you shouldn't be sad because like you can find the good in anything it's like no we are sad and i'm yeah. going to find the good in that like the the people who are there for me and the people who i can be there for that sort of thing yeah our okay. friendship in anime <laughs> great lane perfect perfect summation <laughs> what did you say what did you say what did you power say? of friendship in anime oh yeah. I heard our friendship banana make, and I was like trying to do <laughs> our, our friendship banana make. <laughs> as, as a side note, unimportant, but uh, during this entire time, I was absolutely destroying my entire sleep schedule by working a night shift mm-hmm. at a mental health facility. So, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, during this whole yeah. time, sort of a but meanwhile, yeah. meanwhile, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah meanwhile, cut to the- me like cut to me like holding myself up on a desk trying to stay awake. <laughs> oh. Damn. I actually have a little, I have a tiny story about that. It's less of a story, more of a, we, we played a lot of tabletop together. Um, we have, and we, you know, we still do every once in a while. Less now because of, you know, the quarantine. Um, but uh, uh, there, there were times where we would put together like a full day of playing tabletop games. And Lane would have, would, would like, would work a night shift. With like, that I was what, a, what that, that's what he was like preparing to do. And we would play for a full, like, like an eight to 10 hour day of tabletop games. And we'd be wrapping up and we'd be like, oh, wow, we're all exhausted. But that was like, oh, that was fun. That was cool. Hell yeah. Like, good day. And then Lane would be like, okay, bye. I'm going to work. And we're like, you what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what the fuck? There, there were some days where I would, like, get out of work and it would be 8 a.m. And then we would be starting, like, a tabletop session at 10 a.m. And I would show up until like 6 p.m. And my hours were like, my hours were like midnight to 8 a.m. So I would like, I would, I would stay up from midnight until 6 p.m. the next day, and then just like, then die, yeah. Oh my god. Um, 
don't don't do that to yourself people don't work night shift for longer than a few months if you can help it 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 does not help you sleep better right. no. yeah i'll keep that it in mind <laughs> where did william go <laughs> oh, i got a yogurt ah william a said, yogurt william said fuck this interview i'm out <laughs> oh, yeah, I just, every time I hear Lane talk, I'm like, I gotta get the fuck out of here. Oh, no. there's Ouch! The there's the there's the tea. No, we can't tell them that. We're in a no disclosure agreement about the feud. The feud. The what? The feud. The capital F feud. <laughs> yeah, we're starting fake internet beef between me and William. Well, that's one way to get some clout. Yeah, exactly. It's gonna be a big band conflict. It's gonna be like. It's gonna be like a faux beat breakup, and then we're just gonna like get back together. We'll just go on a hiatus for like a couple weeks, and then come back. Yeah. Like, or we can back. just say we're gonna we can just like announce the hiatus, but keep working on stuff because it's it's all online anyway. No one has to know. Yeah, yeah. exactly. We and then just come out of your hiatus with like four albums. We can exactly. Do what, like she just did. Yeah. We can do what uh, Death Grips did right. and just like announce like that we're breaking up and then just put out another album. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Let's table that thought. Let's think about that. That's really cool. we, could, we could even we could even do the you know go on, go on hiatus for five years and come back absolutely objectively worse than we ever were. Fall Out Boy. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. I'm not gonna say names. But... What did you say? Fall out boy. Boy. <laughs> I'm not gonna mention names, but it's a good guess. I love that. Thank you, thank you. I thought very hard about that one. Wow. You were so quick to it. Yeah, you I were. know, because I've gone off now. Yeah, no, oh, I, yeah. I, I agree. I yeah. agree. Yeah. Follow you do, and then just everything after that is just awful. You remember when they were, did that like press release? Because everyone was complaining about their music so much, and and they said <laughs> that face one you have to do a press release. <laughs> well, and then they said we're so excited about this new album. It's like we're finally getting to make the music we always wanted to, as if like Fueled by Ramen was like forcing them to make emo like in the in the past, and now they now they get to make their shitty pop. stadium rock pop, yeah. pop rock like rock, all, whatever. all that's in my head about fallout boy lately is the fact that i forgot that pete wentz had like a blog where he would just like where he would just like talk <laughs> about, about experiences. and every time like a, a woman was present he would just like say the most fucking like sexualizing things about them that he possibly mm -hmm. could it was, it, was, it, it was really not cool but yeah. it is yeah. like that that recently popped up on the hey you remember this thing and I was like oh fuck that's right that's, <laughs> fuck. So, yeah. that's gross <laughs> yeah that's really gross yeah gross Pete Wentz I fucking mean, gross wasn't he mostly he the better. lyricist for Fall Out Boy he was yeah yeah, yeah. So, with some fucking lyrics didn't didn't yeah. he so he's the one who's who wrote like I'm I'm just I'm just notching your bedpost but you're just aligning a song probably you think he respects women. <laughs> <laughs> bringing up the real questions yeah. here wow <laughs> yeah I, I i i can admit that like looking back on it yeah no he probably never did but let me tell you when when you read what he says about a waitress at a restaurant like oh, no. that's whenever you're kind of like okay that song could have been written out of spite this is like purely just you're a fucking creep dude yeah <laughs> Wow. Well, I never listened to them in the first place, so I don't think I'll be picking them up anytime soon. Don't you dare. Stop this. <laughs> what was your initial question? I've forgotten. <laughs> and we're going to move along because you guys answered it. <laughs> we answered it somewhere in there. We said a lot of words. Yeah, you can... A lot of words and then some fallout boy. It answered it, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gloria, yeah, that's the last question. I completely that's forgot. Did it. <laughs> so, um, how did you guys choose the opener and closer for the album? Did you guys write it that way? Did it fall that way? I think that those were pretty much the opener and the closer from when we first started writing them. Like everything yeah. in the middle kind of got swapped around a lot, but I I think it was very much a conscious decision of like like when I I think we wrote Orchids first and and we mm -hmm. were like this has to be the closer. Like we closed our sets yeah. with it all the time. Um 
it just it just seemed right and then with part one i definitely made a conscious decision of like i'm gonna make this song like as like eclectic as possible to try to just prepare people for like the entirety of the album it's like an overture kind of yeah pretty much serves a similar purpose yeah um yeah so basically from when those songs were first conceived like those were the roles that they were gonna fill like we were we were thinking about like you know some like 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 some some bands will write a bunch of songs and then put them on an album and say it's an album like we were like from the start trying to write an album and we thought of every song we wrote as like a piece of that puzzle Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, and like we were open to the idea that the opening and closer might change if we found something new in other songs but i think we were pretty pretty sure it wouldn't happen and clearly it didn't yeah and having that set like made it 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 informed like our decisions with all of the other songs because it was like Mm -hmm. this is going to come after this like what what would you want to hear after hearing the end of this song you know right yep and then yeah. as far as uh, as far as specifically like writing them is concerned, um, <laughs> classic Jay dies and goes to hell part one went through just an enormous amount of iterations, like yeah. even to, even to the point of being like stripped down completely, rebuilt like from the ground up, and uh, almost got removed from the record because Jay couldn't figure out exactly how to get it all to work together because there were yeah. so many different sections and so many different moving parts, and like we just um, J- Jonas and I, it was funny. Jonas and I like every new um version of it we were like wow this is so good Mm -hmm. um but but like jay was just like it's not it's not what i want it to be so like (laughs) so it was like funny to have to have that conversation like Mm -hmm. continuously where i'm just like in my head going like please please do not cut the song it's Uh. like you could release this version and it would be amazing and it's like which is true because people in the we we released all of the early like demos for our record a bunch of them well a bunch of the early demos for our record and uh, a lot of people have gone through and listened to every single one um and they yeah they love all the early iterations i uh, that the funny thing there is some people like the early versions in like some instances, early versions of songs like better than the final versions, which is just fun. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the way I see it is like, I don't think of a song as a static thing. I think mm. of it as something that we're constantly changing, constantly adding or removing stuff from, you know, just, just constantly tweaking and recording it is just a matter of finding the right point in its evolution to stop it and say that's like what we want to put out but even then after that like the songs have continued to change like mm-hmm. in our live sets like we we've added new stuff to them we've changed the way we play certain parts um it's yeah. just you know we just do what feels good with it and we change our mind about things a lot so <laughs> yeah, in <there's>... short <laughs> we just want to say uh Classic Jay dies and goes to hell. Part one has evolved and become too strong. Please help us. It's going on a rampage. <laughs> Kill it. Uh, that, it, that song was probably the one that we changed the most. Yeah, I think so. And and funnily enough, I think Orchids was the one that we changed the least. Like, yeah, that one was pretty straightforward. That yeah. one and a few of the like instrumental interludes were some of the only ones where like the first or second version was what we went with because it just yeah, it. it Neon glow. Was, yeah, was that early. was a different situation though, because we recorded oh, that with my brother. That's right. And and there was no convincing him to re-record anything. So, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, just to piggyback that, a little bit, that's why we produce our own music because yeah. nobody else would deal with this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. I do want to piggyback a little bit off of what Jay said about like you know changing stuff with our live sets. Um, mm-hmm. Just a, a tiny note. There's a drum fill. Uh, and a couple of like things that I that I do in like a section that we sort of added to Yoshi's Island specifically. Oh yeah! yeah. And every time we play it, I just go, "Damn it! I wish this was the recorded version." Yeah. <laughs> no, that that's what happens. I mean, that's what I'm saying about like finding the right point to stop it in its evolution and record it. You know, sometimes sometimes you miss the mark. I think there's stuff where it's like, I wish I'd tweaked it a little bit more and some stuff where I was like, oh, maybe like two versions before the final is the best. But, you know, it's it's done. It's out. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to go back and change anything. I'm not going to fucking <laughs> Kanye West that shit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> nice. 
I think I think there's like there's a certain cool factor to doing that, but I'm also very not interested in doing it. I think I'm I, glad that he's doing it. The, I don't think a lot. Of here's the thing. Here's the but, thing. It's a slippery slope. Yeah. Like this is that's why I that's why I didn't want to put color bars on the album because I don't mm. like to redo my old songs literally just because it it's like a, a slippery slope. Like if I redo one, then I'll be like I could make all of my old songs better, and it. I just I just don't want to be focusing on old stuff. I want to just like let it be what it is and just move on and do what I yeah. want to do now, you know, move forward. Yeah. <laughs> Solid. All right. All right. Uh so you guys actually just recently released a new single. Is that leading up to an album or an EP? Which or one are, you are guys we talking about? Some... We've released two new singles. We released two <laughs> new singles, the newest one. Um, uh, we we had we released the name of another song. Yeah, that <laughs> we released running. Uh, we released one, running. Yeah, yeah. Oh, running. Okay, so we're talking mm -hmm. about running. That's that one. J the story behind that is true completely. We were that's basically a commission, like sort of. We were we were in the running to have a song in the new Bill and Ted movie, which so, just came out. Yeah, which just mm -hmm. came out. <laughs> um, but it uh, we just didn't we didn't get it. We you know we got somewhere in the process and then they just didn't follow through like with with choosing our song uh but we liked what we had made uh so we wanted to release it on its own so we did that um but that that was like an independent like that song probably never would have gotten written yeah at least in that way mm -hmm. if um if we hadn't been asked to do it by the the people who reached out to the uh, a bunch of different bands harmar superstar was also almost on the bill mm -hmm. in the bill and ted movie huh. harmar superstar was someone who was who was asked to to write a song for the movie i was like i've been seeing like a couple other artists it would be i i had mentioned this to jonas it would have been interesting to find all of the musicians who had been tasked to like make a song and then put together like a compilation album of all of the songs that weren't chosen for Bill and Ted. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think it's not too late to maybe do that. that. That'd be really that cool. Would, it would be cool. It would seem a little spiteful to me. I don't know. Yes, mm. it would. It would seem a little. Spiteful. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But I it's mean, cool. yeah. it it's it's kind of hard not to want to be though because they really did take us back and forth with that a lot. Like it was. First, it was like, this is our favorite song that we've heard. We're definitely going to put it in the movie. And then it was like, oh, could you maybe tweak it a bit? Would you maybe want to like feature a different singer on this? And like a bunch of stuff like that. And then they were like, actually, it's good. We're going to put it in. Uh, here's how much you're going to get paid. Give us our your info. And then they were like, sorry, we decided to not put it in the movie. <laughs> what? I was yeah, certain, we, yeah but, it wasn't yeah. but we were just short like yeah. just it wasn't short certain, but it was almost there we yeah. were talking yeah we were there. It, felt, it felt like that, they there there's sure. a process uh, to this thing where there's like a deal memo uh -huh. and the deal memo is like an upfront of like what you will probably get out of the contract like mm -hmm. the ba ba deal memo is basically here's what we're giving you here's what you're giving us so then like you move forward with the deal memo and everyone goes, yes, this, this seems good to me. Mm -hmm. And then they present a contract and you go back and forth on negotiations with the contract. We probably wouldn't have had a lot of room for negotiating mm -hmm. just because it's like a major motion picture. And yeah. yeah um, it's Bill and freaking Ted. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's probably uh, the music would all be owned by Universal and stuff. So yeah. um, we probably wouldn't own our song mm -hmm. or, or anything like after that. But um yeah, so it would it would have gone to contract and like that was where we were. They had like delivered a deal yeah. memo. They said like this is what we're offering, like this is probably where you're going to be. This is what we want from you. And we were like cool. Um and Run for Cover was involved and they were just like sick. Like let's start like talking about a contract. And then we didn't hear back from them for a few days and then like when we finally did, they were like, "Hey, sorry. We um you know, we the the apparently the music coordinator loved the song. The producers chose a, a different one, so that was like that was where the for us yeah. on our end maybe where a little bit of the the positive communication was coming from was coming from the music coordinator. Yeah, and then the person who actually makes the final decision wasn't as like keen on our song as the music coordinator was. So yeah. it just it, that's how it happens. You know, whatever. Yeah, it, it, it's I a, mean, it's we projects to make that movie, so it's, it's unsurprising that a lot of stuff happens. Yeah, it did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we we with Run for Cover have like a team that is basically constantly looking for opportunities like this. So I'm confident this isn't going to be the last time. So I am not fucked up about it. <laughs> but yeah, no, I would love to. 
I would love to do more like syncing, like for mm-hmm. for yeah. music. And I, I I wish we could figure out how to get like more opportunities like that because mm-hmm. like having some Glass Beach songs in a TV show or like in a movie that would be. If you're listening and you uh, <laughs> you know how to make that happen, that would be sick. Mm-hmm. I mean, like we're not against it at all. Like Tom Scott, if you, if you know who mm-hmm. Tom Scott is, Thomas Tom Scott Ridgewell, the creator of the Astif movies, ASDF <laughs> movies, and um and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, was like reaching out on Twitter for for music for a video, and I just like responded, and um and cold weather ended up getting used at the end of a Tom Scott like vlog. Mm-hmm. Oh, whatever. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> so cool. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's and really he paid cool. us. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. that's, that's even better. Yeah. 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 Um, um, but that, that, oh, that, wait, we didn't answer the we didn't answer the fucking question. No, it's yeah. not leading up to an album. Oh no, it's not. I mean, oh. like. <laughs> but we're not like really good. yeah okay yeah it it we are working on the second album we've got a lot of stuff in the works right now it's probably going to be a while before any mm-hmm. singles are out okay, okay. Um, All right. wait so but, this album but, is this um single wouldn't go on the album no no, no. Ronnie, this, and... this song was written specifically for the bill and ted movie like okay. literally they hit us up about it and the same day we got on a zoom call and basically wrote the song in like an hour or two. <laughs> oh wow and then recorded it over the internet okay. um like like all of us are in our own apartments recorded our parts and then i put it all mm-hmm. together and that's how that came about <laughs> That was right at the start of quarantine. Yeah. Um, but the the newest the newest single, which we released on Garden Head Records um, compilation uh, for uh, for Artist Relief Volume Two, oh, mm-hmm. one check that out because it's got it's got like nineteen songs on it or something, yeah, and there's like, a bunch of like originals and like new covers and stuff from from a bunch of bands like Blue Deputy is on there, and I, I love fucking them. love them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but that compilation is amazing. It, uh, the first like volume compilation is also really great, and it's like p- the the way it's put together to support the the artists on the compilation who need money right now um, because of COVID nineteen and not being able to work and not being able to tour and not really being able to like sell merch or like whatever. Um, it's really cool. I and I loved being a part of it. Uh, our single ten fifteen, which is on that compilation, is also not going to be on the the next record that was what oh i was just gonna say we're kind of just working on stuff that's between that album yeah right now. just yeah, kind of yeah, yeah. one-offs like mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> that's we where... also have we're, we have the, our um roll for streetwise project that is probably gonna be the next that's like true. release that we do or that we're like a part of which is our like we're we're working with the with a member of the greetings adventurers D D podcast to write songs <laughs> basically about like the podcast and like nerd core uh kind, kind of genre music <laughs> but it, it it also sounds like us and yeah that's probably the next like thing we're releasing but we don't really have a date on that either okay. all very exciting yeah. stuff yeah mm-hmm. i mean the second album is in the works it's mm-hmm. been in the yeah, works. We, are working. we can say we're working on it and we yeah. can we can see, we can even you know what i'll even tell you this jay has sent us demos mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i have oh. Um, I will say this: thanks. I've sent enough songs that we probably have an album's worth of material already. But yeah, I'm be very picky about what actually makes it to the album. So who knows? Yeah. <laughs> right. Just right. One of these. We know. Well, we know one for sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we're sold on one. We're, we're sold on one. It was because before we got into quarantine, we had worked on it a bunch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. And it was. It's great, and I love it. And it's yeah. yeah. There's a few that I'm very sure about. We'll talk about it. I mean, yeah. the band will. <laughs> no, no. There's, there's, one, there's one that if we, it doesn't make the record, I'm going to quit the band. Oh, boy. <laughs> I love it so much. Um, so moving right along, uh, where do you see the band in the next five years? Hopefully with a second album out. <laughs> Maybe. That'd be, that'd be good. <laughs> Um, sorry, I keep starting with like, like I, I do like the simple kind of like joke yeah, answers, yeah, yeah. but like, but also too, I mean, like that. Um, it would be cool if we were like in a place after releasing the second album that we could like focus enough on the third album that that's also out in the next five years. Like, I yeah. wouldn't want to rush it, but if we were at a point where like we are actually like living on making music and can like devote, you know, twenty. We are on our way there. Yeah, yeah, we're getting there. That's that's a big part of that's a big part of why the first Glass Beach album took so long is that we were all basically working full time and could barely get any time in a day to actually work on the album at all. Mm-hmm. Um, 
now like i mean we don't have a whole lot more time i mean with with (laughs) with quarantine i've been able to work on music a lot but uh you know that but between that like between maybe like being able to do this full time in the next five years and between like having a contract this actually being like a career for us like it's just we're spending more time on it so i can't imagine the upcoming albums are going to take as long as the first one did Mm -hmm. at least i'm not going to let them take that long (laughs) (laughs) you know i can never spend that long on an album again um we so i can confidently say we will have one more album out in the next five years hopefully hopefully two (laughs) that'd be nice yeah (laughs) Um, Wait, what if we just get them both ready? <laughs> no, that's what that's what I'm gonna do. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Make them both at the same time. Is that what you're saying? No, that's my thing. <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I was, I was gonna say like that. Could, that could. I mean, there there are, there are a few bands I know that have done that. Yeah, like, yeah. Fucking, the Deer Hundred straight up recorded two albums at once and released them within a year of each other. Oh that's my cool. god! Is that what Illinois yeah. Gray was? Uh, oh yeah, Did they those record all together and yeah, like, got yeah, yeah. The release? They didn't. Yeah, yeah. I think they did record all of those together and then just added yeah. the release. And you can, I don't know. They yeah, all yeah, sound the same, yeah they are. They, they're not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, uh, like uh, Radiohead recorded Kid A and Amnesiac at the same time and then put them oh, out shit. in consecutive years. Like, cool. okay. I don't so know there's... that I want to do that though because I like, yeah. Yeah. I like, I like yeah, having yeah. the space and having the. You know, I, I. My hope for the band is that we continue to evolve and try new things and, you know, never really repeat ourselves, you know? Mm -hmm. So I like having the space between it to kind of figure out, like, a new idea of where we want to go or whatever, you know? Like, we've had plenty of time away from the first album material, and I feel like the stuff we're writing now is very different from it. But I also feel like people who like the first album will like the new stuff, too. Like, I, I think it hasn't lost, like, the core of what makes our music our music mm-hmm. it's just it's just we, we we like to experiment i like to experiment <laughs> yeah. if you like- the, only time I, the only time i would want to do that is if like we were recording two things that were like meant to be like super interconnected in one way or another mm-hmm. and it was like it, it would have to be like an intentional thing of like yes these two things are supposed to be released separately but be very connected Mm-hmm. I don't want to do that. Like, not like a conceptual <laughs> thing with it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what I what I was gonna say was about like the future of um the sound, I guess, or like whatever we're going for. If you if you like if you like ten fifteen, um, that is a that is a good representation of like a direction a direction that we are going. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's uh, it's I don't know. It's like very it's very cool production wise. Like I think I think Jay's doing a lot more experimenting with production in a similar way that we experimented with genre in the first album. Mm-hmm. Um, we're still going to be doing whatever we want genre wise, um, but this is um, this next album is going to be more like just outwardly completely experimental. And then yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay uh oh and then as far as uh um, just complete like a, a summed up sort of next five years uh i mean like yeah i want to i want all of us living off the music. again what <laughs> touring again yeah yeah yeah. i want all of us living off the music um i want us all like full-time mu- musicians like yeah. we, we don't have other jobs unless we want them um but i uh living off the music have released one possibly two albums since then and uh, uh, also, I I want um, us to have like a bunch more music videos made. Yeah, I sure. I know I know I want to do that because uh, we like and we got we had two music videos that got cut off because of Aww. quarantine and everything. Like, yeah, we were literally you know setting up to shoot some of them, and yeah, I mean I think I've said I've said on another thing, but I'll just say it right here. Like I we I had a the first music video idea that I had for the album was for orchids Mm -hmm. and we were fine. Like I had that idea. I have it like storyboarded and like shot listed out and everything. And then uh, we were setting up to record, like shoot that music video. And uh, the week that we 
<clears throat> we're going to shoot it, uh, LA issued the lockdown order. And yeah. Aww. Yeah. It was literally like we had the location booked and everything. And the day that we had booked it happened to be in like the first week of quarantine. <laughs> yeah. <Aww. laughs> yep. yeah. Yeah. I mean, we were even debating calling it off anyway because we mm -hmm. hadn't, like, LA hadn't gotten into lockdown yet. But, like, yeah, but we were things, clear that things were about to happen. Things were happening. And, like, yeah, Jonas and I were, like, talking back and forth because we lived together. So we were just like, yeah, should we just, like, I'm, I was like, I'm, I'm nervous about it. I don't want anyone to feel uncomfortable. I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to be responsible for anyone getting sick. Like, we should just call it off. Yeah. yeah. And then it got called off for us. So, <laughs> yeah. 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 Huh. All right. Um, <laughs> um so for the last couple questions we're actually going to shift away from music and go straight to death row so if you're on death row what would your last meal be with a drink oh last meal on death row <laughs> i gotta think jeff bezos just kidding jeff, jeff bezos <laughs> is your last meal oh my God. They have to give it to you, right? <laughs> yeah, they have to give I'm it to you. I'm a vegetarian and I agree with Lane. And I would. Wait, what did you say? Oh, Jeff. What? Jeff Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> or a non Jeff Bezos related answer. Um, God. I. Part of the, the strategist in me is saying whatever would take me the longest to eat so I can just <laughs> really buy out that time, you know? <laughs> If I if okay if I, if I'm singling it down to like a I I would want a really like nice roasted chicken sandwich, <laughs> um with a side of sweet potato fries, and then uh, and then an, and then a nice cold chalky milk. Solid. Hell yeah, classic. <laughs> I think yeah. what I would want, like for real, is I would want uh, a very well barbecued like Texas style barbecued like tomahawk steak mm -hmm. and uh i would want that with like a side of like there's a very particular way i like to make mashed potatoes and i and i would like <laughs> that along with like some like southern baked mac and cheese mm. and then finish it off with like I, I i what i want is like i want a really moist like chocolate cake with like mm -hmm ice cold like german uh like german chocolate cake frosting so like the coconut like stuff on yeah. top like ice cold okay but then, but then like steaming hot like fudge like in the middle so like a like a like a volcano like melted chocolate oh cake. yeah yeah but with like an ice cold like uh german chocolate frosting on it and, oh like, yeah and so then i would have a glass of um i would probably have a glass of like freshly made uh cranberry grape juice because i like cran grape juice but i would but i would want to taste like like fine cranberry grape juice mm -hmm. hell yeah solid just a whole bunch of spanakopita that's what i'd want uh, <laughs> all right yeah. i want some like really nice sushi that's what mm -hmm. i want <laughs> I have mm. my. It was it was my birthday just the other day, and I had some oh. sugar fish for dinner and something like just some nice gourmet sushi. That's what I need. Happy <laughs> yeah, happy I would have been birthday. happy if I died happy right birthday. then. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Well, actually, when is when is this gonna come out? Uh, probably like a month from now. Okay, well, it will have been my birthday. It will have just been your birthday. Oh, yeah. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday, birthday. Well, yeah. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Happy even late. Birthday. How old are you? <laughs> how old am I now or how old will I be? Or wait. How old, will you? Oh, how old am I now while we're recording this or how old am I now? How old are you in... Wait. <laughs> how old are you How old are you in the timeline? How old are you in the now of the audience experiencing this? <laughs> I'm 28. Oh, my God. Cool. Yeah. I'm 25. <laughs> I'm the baby in the band. Yeah, Jay's the baby. We, <laughs> we talked about this. We're all our and Jay's the baby. <laughs> we're all like almost just a year apart. Jay's is 25. Jonas I'm is 26. 26. I'm 27, and William's gonna be 28. Oh, that's yeah. so cool. We got it covered. 
We like, did like it. A, like a whole university right here. We did it. <laughs> did it. Um, yeah. So we just need a super senior. <laughs> <laughs> and a PSEO. Yeah, and a PSEO student. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So I have the honor of asking the last question, and every single person you've spoken to has said the most important question. What is your favorite color? Blue. Probably teal specifically. Yeah. Damn. That's what I, I was gonna say. We can match. Yeah. I, I like mean... match. I like I like anything that's like in between blue and green. Yeah. Like this shirt that I'm wearing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can you can really easily tell because like everything I own is some version of blue green or teal or something. Hey. <laughs> My favorite color is like a mustard yellow. Mm -hmm. mm. like uh yeah i also really do love teal like if i my like three are mustard yellow teal and like this purple mm -hmm. like a, a soft kind of like faded purple not a royal purple but like a mm -hmm. you know a mm -hmm. gray almost a grayish purple. i love lavender yeah like a grayish purple yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. but there, if i had to pick one mustard yellow there are two colors that i absolutely love and it's hard for me to pick between them but they're very specific they are uh daniel smith uh, paint pigments. That's a name. Wait. What are color paint pigments? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, my favorite. Daniel my favorite Smith colors are Daniel color. Smith and uh, and Marcus. Um... <laughs> <Yo. laughs> my my favorite colors are the first one's called uh, Mayan Blue Genuine, mm -hmm. and then the second one is called Amethyst Genuine. Cool. And Those are pink colors. Like, you have to pick wait, one. I can give you my favorite Roscoe like lighting colors if that's more. Yeah, yeah. I can give you, you my favorite Pantone. Well, I'm, well, I'm, <laughs> I'm just I'm getting I'm getting very specific because it's like there's lots. I love like all yeah. shades of blue, but like Mayan mm -hmm. blue just has like. Well, you're a painter. A quality to it. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing is like dang, like I don't know like when you when you start like seeing like the specific shades that come up with for certain paints, you're kind of like holy shit. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, now pick now pick one, Lane. Which one of those two? Um, you have to. You have to pick one. I absolutely have to. Um, I guess it's gonna have to be Mayan blue then. Mayan blue. Ooh. All right. But, but what kind of blue is that? What's it look like? Draw it for uh, me. Draw me that color. I mean, literally, just type in Daniel Smith Mayan just, blue. Describe it to me like I've never seen color before. Like you've never seen color. Okay. <laughs> Uh, if you could imagine the deepest part, like not uh, the, the deepest parts of the ocean that you can still perceive. I've never seen it. So. I'm blind. <laughs> I've never seen color. <laughs> Compare it to something that isn't visual. You, you said you said don't like you've never seen color. You didn't say like you were blind. <laughs> <laughs> if you I want it without visual it. descriptions. <laughs> Cause I, cause yes. I need to know. Give me you a description. description. Give me a description of this color without using anything visual. <laughs> it's a it's a deep, bold, velvety, cool but ominous color. Okay. Ominous. That's pretty good. Looking that at it, yeah, we're looking, yeah. At it right. we're looking at it right. We're looking at it right now. You're pretty correct. Yeah. Damn. Wow. Also, cool. this, this is a brilliant. Blue. It's, it's like yeah. It, it it teeters a little bit into teal sometimes too. So it's like mm -hmm. yeah. I think I think you would really like this blue. Jet. What's it called? I need to see this color. We it's typed in Daniel Smith Mayan blue genuine. I I only have the dark blue, but I have I have a tube of Mayan blue. Hold this it is still. this is great like audio, isn't it? Do you know that Twitter? You know that Twitter that's like just, squeezing just, food like uh, oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah I love that one. Uh, squeezing food with force. Do that with the paint right now. Also, Ooh. side side thing. Mike Bachman of the Greetings Adventures podcast submitted something to that, like of of him squeezing cheese, <laughs> and, it, and it got like almost ten thousand likes or something. Oh That's amazing. And I would do that if this didn't cost like fifteen dollars. Yeah, those yeah. are expensive. Man, do it for the podcast. Everyone can see it. Yeah. <laughs> Can someone Venmo me fifteen dollars to replace the? No, two? I'm kidding. Don't do it, Lane. Don't do it. <laughs> I'm not like I'm not chaotic like that. I don't I don't do those sorts no, of things. Of course not. Um, <clears throat> what your two favorite colors? Black. <laughs> oh, you're a regular bumblebee. The two of you. <laughs> yep. Oh well. Mm. Just together. Yeah. A bumblebee. 
Yeah, yeah. but we have those. We have those answers on deck. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah, has, has, have other people asked you? Yes. Yeah. Is that why you responded so quickly? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, wow, you have a lot of polite guests. It's a good question. Like... <laughs> background is yellow and black. Are are all the answers to any questions we could ask you hidden in the background of y'all's? <laughs> No, yeah, I wish. Like That's a great idea. Usual though. stuff. I was gonna say I love that uh, Snoopy poster. I noticed it like ten minutes oh, into the call. Thank you. Yeah. It's actually like a gigantic sticker. Oh, it, yeah, oh it's a so it's like, wall sticker. Oh, yeah, like yeah, one yeah, of yeah. those fat heads. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, it came with like we're we're still doing the podcast, but it came with like a bunch of other like Snoopies, and they're like basically oh, cool. like the same size as that Snoopy. So you have like a business one, and you, it, it was Snoopy. it was great. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. whole like Snoopy oh, yeah. tapestry. That's awesome. Yeah, there's wow. one in every room in the house because I had too many, so it was just yeah. Like, wow, that's, that's awesome. awesome. Oh, yeah. Snoopy's in, <laughs> Snoopy in the house. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so as I said, that's all the questions we have today. Is there anything you'd like to plug? Uh, listen to ten yeah. fifteen by that comp. It goes to support artists who have been. What is the comp called? It's it is, pandemic it's artist release for artist relief volume two, I think. Yeah, I believe so. Garden head compilation for or garden, garden head, head records. records compilation for artist relief volume two. And yeah, it's got like 19 or so songs on it. You can buy each individual one, but if you're at all able, I think you should pay for the whole, uh, the whole comp and you get a bunch of songs with it. And yeah, it goes to support artists. Um, at some point that will also be like streaming, but it'll be a bit, cause we want people, we want to raise money with that album. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, other than that, I mean, hopefully we have merch available right now at shop.glassbeach.band. Um, at the time of recording, we are out of the pink rat hats, but we're restocking. We might have yeah. some time of release, but just check on that site there. There might even be something new. I have no idea what we're doing a month from now. So Same here. Um, yeah, and, and go back and check out the Calico music video. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, oh my gosh, I'm really... I'm just going to say it. Um, we've also released the behind the scenes or like a, a little, you know, behind the scenes thing for Calico. Mm-hmm. Um, it has, it's not out. It now. is out, not out of the time of recording, but it's at not time out of now. Release. It will be when this comes but out. It will yeah. be when this comes out. Yeah. Okay. Likely. Right. So you two are actually the first like non in people to know, I think. Yeah. No. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. It's like, a, it's a fun little thing I that I'm, I'm putting together. I haven't even seen this yet. But it's I, not, I, I, was I haven't even made it yet. I was surprised that you let him record the footage for it. I yeah, we have footage. We have footage. Uh, our animator, Chris. Uh, what? Weren't we using like a a little like Chewbacca plushie, like as like the placeholder for the cat in a lot of yeah, the shots? I, that's going to be in the, yeah, that's gonna be <laughs> behind the scenes as well. Uh, just some shots of that. The, our animator, um, Chris Tanaguchi and uh, Shan Murphy, the one who designed the Calico Cat, they both did little like sit down, uh, you know, little interview things for me. And so I'm going to be cutting that together with some footage and some stuff that I've, uh, I'm going to say is like the producer and director for the video. And then it should be short. It should be a short little video, um, but it'll be fun. So yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. And then also check out our uh, single running. <laughs> yeah check out running check out our yeah, single uh, running uh that check- one is on all streaming services um, today. y'all should make sure to also check out uh, uh it's uh, this is gonna be released next month so it's been out for a little bit but jiraiya has a new song called split which is really good mm-hmm. uh a band called Pink Shift, which is also very good has a has a new uh music video out that's also very good yes. and uh yeah, both those are, are very much worth checking out. Very good. Car cool. Talk. Car Talk and Barty Strange. They've got albums dropping. And I'm yes. very excited about both of those. So Yeah. Yeah, and I'm pretty and I, I, the, it's either out now or you can pre-order their vinyl, and you definitely should. Also, the new Oceanator is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> we will definitely there will definitely be more cool shit from us in the future. <laughs> all right like one of those, hold on like one of those uh those ending like things during a marvel movie where they're like spider-man will return and the avengers oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it, oh, it cuts yeah. to, it cut, the, the end credit sequence is done everything's done it cuts to black and then it says there will definitely be some more cool shit from us in the future. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where we're gonna leave it new cool it's shit like in the Stan future Lee walks out. <laughs> so uh thank you for sending out this guys this has been glass Glass Beach and We're the Good Noise Podcast.